Hello and welcome back to Expedition Builds. So it's been a really fun week for us at EJS here in Moab, Utah. And part of what I was doing this week was I was able to hang out a little bit with the Bronco crowd uh, in Bronco Nation uh, and Bronco Rodeo. They were nice enough to, to uh, invite us out and do some work with them. So I've spent some time this week in various Broncos, seen various builds, which I'll get you guys some pictures of. Um, that's always fun to see. Uh, what people are doing with theirs, just like in the jeeping world. So, as you guys know, I own a Jeep JL 2020. I'm running the two liter uh, e torque in mine. I am in a, I believe this is a Badlands build. This, this truck has just about everything on it. It's a four door, uh, it's the twin turbo 2.7 liter. I think that's putting out on premium gas about 330 horsepower. So, um, I wanted to do this video to do a quick comparison because I know there's been a lot of videos comparing the two vehicles. But, you know, as a Jeeper, getting some seat time in the brand new Bronco and being able to give you guys a little bit of experience about what I think of it. So first off, uh, on-road manners, this thing is fantastic. You know, with the independent front suspension, um, she drives great. Uh, my Jeep drives great, but I would say in terms of comfort and just the way how solid this feels in the wind, a little bit of an edge to the Bronco owners because of that, you know, that suspension setup. Now, of course, as we know, um, you can wheel Broncos. That's not a problem at all. They're not going to articulate, not going to flex as much as a Jeep. So I think, but you know what I noticed this week with the uh, good amount of Bronco owners that I was able to interact with is that they don't, didn't really buy their Broncos to go, you know, crush a bunch of big rocks. They are, uh, they're using them as, uh, lifestyle vehicles to get out to explore uh, to do some off-roading in the sense that it's not not too heavy duty but the truck is here's my first impressions of it it's it rides great it steers great there the Ford's four-wheel drive uh, system on this is super easy to use it's done via this knob um, so selections are super easy all switch gear is easy to operate and operates very fast so um, would it make me want to switch out of my Jeep uh, into a Bronco? I would say in a perfect world, I'd want, I'd want one each because they're different vehicles. Uh, you know, what I use my Jeep for, my Jeep is my daily driver. You know, I've talked to you about uh, that before. I'm in that vehicle every day and with that build, you know, I want the capability of, to be able to go out to explore, to be able to cover interstate at high speed and to be able to crawl over some big obstacles you know so my jeep's built for that does that pretty well on 37s uh driving this i could see this would be uh for somebody who doesn't want to do all that the jeep is capable of this would be a superb vehicle to take a look at and uh you know maybe spend some seat time behind so it's jumping out of my jl and jumping into the bronco is this thing is comfortable capable uh it steers and go down, goes down the road so nicely um, the interior that, that made uh, a lot of good useful space in here you know when you see the video we'll give you a vi quick shot of the videos or the vehicles side by side so you can kind of dimensionally see how they compare but uh, I like this package from Ford I like it a lot um, so what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to take it out and just uh, I've got my you know my fully built Jeep I'm fully loaded for EJS with a bunch of gear in there it's probably pretty heavy Let's just line the Bronco and my two-liter uh, JL up on a dirt road. And let's just let's just do a quick acceleration test and see what we find. It might be interesting. I think I'm going to get smoked. Actually, is what I think. So, before we line these two up and mash the accelerator, let's take a quick look at the specs on each vehicle. I just mash it and let's see what happens. Yeah. I think you can come up a little more. All right. Okay. Let's go on three. One, two, three, go. Wow. He just got a huge jump on me off the line. Oh, the Jeep pulls him all the way. <laughs> all right. All the way to 70 on a dirt road. And I got <laughs> Well, let's 
get this let's get this uh, up so I can talk to you guys. So there you go, my my two liter. Now you guys I do have an intake and I do have a, a three a three inch exhaust on mine, but that's not a lot. Um, just just kind of beat this Bronco right off the line. Later. Well, the yeah, I was I put it that to the floor and held it. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, that was that was a blast. Even with that terrible start, I was a little surprised that Bronco couldn't close the gap on my JL. Time to line them up and run them again. That's like, what was the last time I did a drag okay. race? <laughs> okay, round one. Round one, the JL took the, took the Bronco, but had a big jump. So, um, just to be fair, like I said, I have an intake. I'm making my, my two liter breeze a little better, but there's no map in there. There's none of that stuff. So, um, I have no idea what kind of power it makes, but the, the turbo in the Jeep is very lively. So, round two, uh, I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna put a little load on it and then see if we can get off the line uh, quicker and and see if we can keep up with the Jeep. All right. So, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna load it a little bit. So, anyway, so uh, 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 do that again, Kevin. <laughs> we gotta let's get are we we're gonna let's get our starter here and we're gonna look at a, our starting tree and not try to run Logan over um, okay let's get a little closer let's talk about it. let's shut down at 60 miles an hour unless there's a clear unless you're pulling me I'm gonna shut down at 60 okay. and when you drop the hand is when we go There we go, much better start for me in the Bronco. And here you can see the 60 horsepower, 120 foot pounds of torque advantage the Bronco has over my two liter JL. Okay, well, that's kind of more what I thought was gonna happen with the horsepower advantage of the Bronco, that I should be able to pull it. So if we, uh, I had a much better take off that time, you guys. So anyways, uh, the two liter hung well with the like I said, I, I know I'm carrying a heck of a lot more weight and I'm built with my Jeep, but anyhow, that was fun. That's, uh, like I said, both of these platforms are pretty amazing machines. And uh, to be honest, I love them both. You know, like I said, if in a perfect world, if I had, if I had uh, the wherewithal, I'd have one each. But uh, so there you go. A quick impromptu drag race down a dirt road out in Moab, Utah. And nobody was harmed during this production. Okay, in conclusion, uh, some of the things I got to observe spending time in both vehicles this week was this. Uh, the Bronco's a great, great vehicle, great platform, you know, um, I think Ford had the luxury of really, really being able to study uh, what Jeep has done with the Wrangler, especially, uh, you know, four-door, and decide um, for what they wanted to, how they wanted to present that vehicle, um, you know, how they were going to build it. And for instance, a couple of things. So they decided to go independent front suspension, which, you know, like I mentioned, drives straight, drives great on road. Uh, straight line stability of the wind is better over a Jeep. Um, and I, I got to read the uh, chief engineer uh, from Ford uh, talking about the release of the new Bronco before it hit the market. And they said that that decision not to go solid front axle was based on what they concluded 90% of their, their buyers would not be using that vehicle in a hardcore off-road environment. So, you know, they were, they're, they're playing the numbers and they're building it for who they're going to sell it to. And that's kind of what I saw um, with a little bit of the Bronco population that I was able to hang with during the week was that's exactly right. That's how they're using them, you know. Um, and hats off to them for getting that right. Another thing about, in terms of being able to study what Jeep did, you'll notice on the Bronco that they have a lot of really great built-in mounting points for light accessories, like you know a light bar on the top. It mounts right to the roof. Um, those those places are already there. So, um, same thing on the A pillar. So they, you know, they've done, they've studied the case. They they kind of understand what 
people want to do with the customization of it. And I think that's kind of key. So let's talk about that for a second. So in terms of customization, you know, Jeep definitely has the edge there. I mean, the Wrangler's been in the marketplace for so long that, you know, you have so many great choices when it comes to building in terms of parts in the aftermarket that, you know, the Wrangler's not, or the uh, Bronco's not going to be there for many years, I think. Um, but they will catch up eventually, you know. There's plenty of people working to, uh, to you know, to take care of that for us. So um, that will come along. I think in terms of just uh, looks, I like the way a Ford or Wrangler looks, especially built um, over over the Bronco. The Bronco to me is a little bit slab sided, um, especially in the Ford. Or and I think that you know I was I was at Ford doing some work with another manufacturer and, and got to see some of the early. Uh, right after prototype stage when they were getting ready to release it, uh, both the four doors and the two doors up close. And, and if it was me, if I was buying one, um, I would be buying a two door Bronco, put it on a three inch lift and 37s. And here's the reason for that. It's just purely visual for me. That gets closest to the proportion of the original Bronco, which, you know, which I think, I, I certainly love that. And I, I think a lot of the world did. Um, when you see one of the first gens lifted, um, I think the proportions are just spot on. So if I was doing a Bronco, it'd be a two door for me. So who knows, maybe one day. Uh, second thing, packaging, you know, I think the Bronco's a little bit wider across, um, which, you know, yields some nice interior space. Um, is gonna be uh, there again, maybe a tiny bit of a handicap off road. You know, as you get bigger and wider, it's, uh, it doesn't make it quite as agile, but there again, I don't think that, uh, most of the Bronco takers are going to be using their their vehicles that way, so that's probably not an issue. It's just going to allow a little bit more comfort, a little bit more cargo space. Uh, what else? Um, you know, is is the new Ford Bronco? Is, is it enough to make me get out of my Jeep? And I would say no, it's not because, you know, I mentioned to you. I think I, I like the way that a built Wrangler looks um, over the Broncos right now, but also. You know, the way I built my Wrangler is, I, I do crawl obstacles, it is an overland vehicle. Um, I think I've got it really dialed in to be like almost a perfect all-rounder, you know, with the 37s. Uh, so, um, not trading the Jeep in for a Bronco, but uh, enough said about that. So, now let's talk about, let's talk about powertrains, right? So, it's another thing that Ford had an opportunity to study what Jeep was doing and that, you know, that 2.7 turbo in the Bronco versus my two liter turbo, I'm giving up 60 horsepower and 120 foot pounds of torque, I believe. That, that's, a, that's a pretty huge advantage for the Bronco. Plus the Bronco you saw in our, in our impromptu uh, drag races, you know, that thing was stock. There's, uh, there's very little in the way of accessories on it. And my Jeep is, is pretty much fully built and I was loaded for EJS. So you got to see kind of what that performance looks like the two liter versus the 2.7 and uh, frankly I was surprised that the two liter especially with as much weight as I have on mine uh, was able to hang as well as it did with the 2.7 in straight line performance also note that you know in the four-wheel drive in, uh, in goat mode the uh, on their selection I was in sport which means I think that gives me like a that's four high, so I had better traction off the line. If you notice in the second race, um, the Jeep jumps off the line just a little quicker, and the two liter turbo is really a very lively uh, drivetrain. Um, but what was, I believe what was happening there was not being in uh, any sort of locked diffs or anything that he was spinning, he was spinning wheels on the soft, the soft dirt road we were on. So um, anyways, uh, like I said, I think that uh, what we're going to see is, and this is the greatest thing of all, I think, of having the new Bronco in the marketplace, is that it's going to make the Jeeps better. And both vehicles, this competition, if you will, is going to make both of these vehicles uh, uh, really shine and come to life uh, much quicker. For instance, you know, Jeep just released their new Hurricane uh, inline six. Um, twin turbo I think that that thing is good. sounds like an amazing power plant that we'll probably see next along with some electrified version of it 
in the Wrangler, so I'm looking forward to that. So there again, you know, the competition makes the breed better, and that's probably, for me, the, the greatest thing that the Bronco is, is bringing to market is, like, it's another excellent choice uh, for those who want to want to have a good-looking truck and be able to take it off-road and get out and explore. Um, you know, you can't go wrong with either of these. Just for me, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm a Jeep person, and and uh, while the Bronco is a great, great all-around vehicle, it's not enough to make me want to uh, give up my Jeep. So I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this comparison between these two. It sure has been fun uh, getting a chance to experience them both side by side. I think the ability when you jump out of one and into the other is when you really get a good sense of, of the differences and the subtleties of each. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we look forward to bringing you more content soon. And until next time, stay safe and we'll see you on the trails.